Hey, YouTube, welcome back to Axis and Allies. The Garrison Detroit here coming to you from the bunker once again. Uh, uh, Axis and Allies, the Garrison, along with my co host coming to you from the Canadian Pacific Coast, uh, Gargantua uh, from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. So, once again, welcome to another episode of Decoding Axes and Allies. All right, guys, today's what I consider a very special episode because I have not only we're going to uh, answer a few of the questions that were uh, posted on the channel uh, in regards to the sea lion uh, strategy video that we did last week, but we also have a special announcement, okay? And that announcement is that we have officially uh, got, got, gotten a sponsor, okay? And that is uh, Historical Board Gaming is now officially uh, the channel's uh, sponsor, which is uh, amazing. I am very excited about that. So that will what that means for us is that we will be able to, on a, on a regular basis, be able to give out gift certificates to those uh, uh, members of the community who, through a, lo a lottery system, will be able to uh, benefit. All right, so I'm very excited about that. So let's go ahead then with the questions. And the first one is by Ghazi RD. And he's asking what program is used for that. And of course, uh, he also says it's really interesting. I'm assuming that he's talking about AAA. Gargantua, how can we go ahead? Uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about AAA and how, what we can do to download it real quick? Yeah, sure. So uh, AAA has been around about a decade. Um, it's a completely open source game uh, program, basically by volunteers. It has every version of Axis and Allies that you could possibly want to play there. They're named a little bit different for copyright reasons, but that's that. It is what it is. Um, it's a really good program in terms of it. Just it functions well. It plays well. Gives you the options that you need. Um, unlike some of the uh, professionally done games, which are super rigid and don't let you do casualty selection and have other serious problems, uh, AAA you know basically gets around all that and does does performs very very well. Yeah. Uh, AAA's only downside is the AI is 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 pretty weak. Uh, and that's just due to, I think, to the complexity of access and allies and, and how you would code an AI to write that. And quite honestly, the professional programmers, again, haven't done much better. So um, anyway, that's that's the future. But uh, I think you can download it. If you just sort of Google uh, Google AAA SourceForge, you'll come up with their website. You can download it right off the website. Um, you can play live. And actually, we'll probably end up doing um, a tutorial video on that later. Yes. Um, yep. because, because Detroit here does not have AAA in his computer. So I told him I'm going to arm wrestle him into downloading it. And so I think we'll, in a 20-minute video, we'll probably force Detroit to get it on his computer and use it. So. I actually I actually have to correct you, my brother. I do have oh, no. AAA on my computer. I downloaded uh -huh. AAA okay. five years ago. <laughs> yeah. I tried Time for a new one. one. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sure that's an old version of the of the yeah. AAA program, but yeah. I played it once and I really didn't get into it. And it was interesting. I was excited about it, but for some reason, I just didn't follow through. All right, yeah. so anyway, next so question. Yeah, just pull up their address here, which I believe yeah. is, it's triple A, so just one A. So it's triple the word, then the letter A dash game, G-A-M-E dot org. Uh, you go right there and the first link right at the top of the website is download AAA. Um, and not only were you going to get all the Axis Allies games, you're going to get Napoleon at War, Napoleon Empires, um, Lord of the Rings Risk, like all kinds of really awesome games um, that, that are all there in, in varying states of, of construction, as well as some experimental um, Axis Allies games. So you're going to have a lot of fun and you can play live by form, whatever. Does AAA make you a better player? Yes. Hands down. Hands down. It's hard in some sense because you don't see the whole board at once. So some guys get frustrated with that. Although there are Zoom features, if you've got a big screen, you can mess around with it. Uh, but th what makes you a better player is playing more Axis and Allies. And if you download AAA and you start playing online, you're going to play Axis and Allies every day, and you're going to think about Axis and Allies every day as opposed to every you know other weekend or once every three months. And that that's the difference. Uh, what was the one thing that turned me off towards the uh, AAA actually? Where you just yeah. mentioned that. The fact that you're playing in when you're playing, you're zooming into a specific section of the yeah. world map and you yeah. don't see the rest of the map. And yeah. that was a little bit of a turnoff for me. And I think that was really the primary reason why I yeah. didn't get into the game as much as I, sh as I could potentially have. And it's yeah. interesting that that's the one thing you bring up. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, and I know because it was a challenge for some guys because you got to kind of scour the board. But there's a couple of features that have really helped out with that now. So the first feature is you can you can basically zoom out if you want. Obviously, yeah. so if you have a big monitor, that's helpful. Um, it's not as, as nice because it doesn't um, uh, doesn't sort of scale as well, but it, it works. Uh, so that's number one. But the other feature now is it used to be you could press the end key, but now there's arrows at the bottom right of the interface. It'll go through all of your pieces one by one. So if you have a piece you haven't moved, um, you can quickly scroll through that and it'll tell you, hey, this sub in the Atlantic, uh, you know, you forgot about it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I got to do something with that. So it's really helpful in terms of making sure that you're, you know, taking command of your whole situation. Now, now AAA is compatible with both PC and, and Mac? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. great. Okay. Awesome. All right. So the chaplain, okay. Our good friend chaplain, who's uh host. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The St. Louis event uh, this uh, uh, coming March. And yeah. uh, there's uh, still space for uh, those who wish to attend. If you want to register for this tournament, please reach out to the chaplain because uh, he will be hosting a great event. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be there uh, with a few others. So I'm looking forward to that. So the chaplain asks, uh, Gargantua, have you ever done Sea Lion and taken Moscow? Yes, more than several times. Probably the most infamous, infamous example was uh, 2017 at YG's uh, tournament. It was my day two game. Um, we took Sea Lion, we took Moscow, we took Washington in, I think, 12 rounds. Um, again, it was like Blitz Price and we went. And again, there's I don't want to discredit the Cliffside Commandos. They put up a good fight, and I think they got a little bit diced. Who, who um, there's also team, an experience, experience gap, too. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, when, when you got someone over a barrel and, and it counts for how much you punish them, uh, they're, they're going to get it pretty bad, right? Because uh, in that game, like, you needed every point in order to, you know, whoever had the most points was going to make the gold medal game. So you had to fight for every every nickel and dime you could get. Yeah. Uh, and you got a prize every time you scored a point. So they, they got punished pretty hard. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's a good example of I took Sea Lion, took Moscow, um, and then went on to you know, Washington, right? So, who was your teammate, by the way? Variance. Uh, Variance is, uh, yeah, he's a he's a doctor somewhere, and uh, he's like a mathematics doctor somewhere, and really? in, in, yeah, oh. uh, and okay. whatever in East Coast Canada. Uh, really good guy. I like him a lot. Uh, a smart guy. He just when his dice get bad, he gets a little depressed easy. So you just got to keep the mood high. Um, but other than that, he's, he's an awesome player to play with. Okay. And then who, uh, you saw the commandos were what, uh, YG? I Young think Rats it was, them? it was two guys. It was Pink Panzer, who's on some of the WhatsApp groups and whatever else. Yep. And there was his buddy. I can't remember his name, uh, but sometimes you see him in his muscle shirts at YG's <laughs> and YG's photos. Uh, yeah. I want to say it's like Plebman or something, but I, I okay. can't remember. Yeah. Shellman. That's what it is. It's Shellman. Oh. Yes, I've heard of him. And, uh, and yeah, that. Shellman's a very, a very competitive guy. He never wants to admit that he's he's licked, uh, but at uh, the bitter end, it was it was undeniable. So hey, he, won't, he won't go down easy, huh? Yeah. Well, and I I felt bad for those guys because actually they played another game or they had done well, and then they kind of got robbed because they they didn't realize how many points they'd scored. Yeah. And so I think actually they would have made the medal round if they had been paying attention to how well they were doing. So. But anyway, all right. So, uh, Gary Blevins from Board Game Nation. He actually—it's not a question; it's more of a comment. He did make a comment about uh, he's very curious about the uh, ger uh, the German carrier strategy. Uh, uh, he says that he's looking forward to that video. Of course, that's not your strategy. That strategy no. actually is. Um, well, Carl, we'll, we'll invite Carl. Carl. We'll do a we'll do a video with him, and I think yeah. he'll do a good job of kind of reading us into that. We'll probably be able to pull up some example games from from uh, yeah. and kind of show how that strategy progresses. I, I'm curious to learn about it because I'm not familiar, but I'm not surprised that there's a mechanic like that that works. So. Yeah, that's that's actually interesting, and I would like I would look forward to see how that works because it it seems, uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem that the German carrier strategy in the Atlantic is the way to go, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, that, that there's a way. Yeah. All right. So Matthias or Matthias, uh, great stuff, guys. He comments, uh, he, he, uh, he says, can I ask, have you guys ever won a game after a failed sea lion had two games where we just terminated after G3, assuming it was over. So what happens a lot of times is that once sea lion fails, 
a lot of the guys or many of the guys in the community, what they do is they just say, oh, game over. There's no way we can win this game. And they just hang up the gloves, throw in the towel, and they say, it's over. Why even bother? Yeah. So what say you in regards to that? Uh, I say no. It, it ain't no. over till it's over. Um, because I've had games where Germany's lost France and they've won. And there's lots of people who tell you that story, um, which is not too dissimilar than losing sea line. So it's painful, but sometimes if you attack London and you lose, depending on what the United States has done, whether they're at war with Japan or not, or whether they spent Atlantic or not, uh, if you lose, the, the, you know, the Soviet Union and the United States can't declare war on you. So in theory, you've got another round to sort of land and try and take it again. Um, it can be a bit of a scramble, you know, depending on how bad you lose, um, depending on how much, you know, air power that you've lost or what point you've pulled out. But generally speaking, if, if you lost, let's say, and there's like one unit on London, and let's say yeah. London's already been damaged and whatever else, if you're able to muster enough and sort of your non-combat move to get another landing force, uh, or sometimes I've seen it where, you know, Italy is, is lurking around and they've got like a little crack shot at it, um, that can work. And, uh, and I've seen it where you didn't get it G3 because you failed, but you picked it up G4, barely, albeit. Um, and it's real painful on the Eastern Front, uh, but I've, I've managed to pull that off before. So I, I don't want to say, and because what happens usually is, is you're playing global and the guys laugh at you because you lost sea line. Nah, you know, you're, you're done. It's all over. Yeah. And what they'll do is they divert Russian resources to put extra pressure on Japan. Um, you know, they're focusing the Mideast on, uh, again, supporting India. And usually the Americans are like, well, I don't even need to be in the Atlantic. It's pointless. Oh. Uh, and so then, you, you know, you kind of surprise them and you get it. But even then it's like, well, Germany's empty. So Russia's just going to gobble it up. And usually Russia's making you know, $50 or whatever at that time, or, or maybe even 60, depending on how well they're doing. Uh, but, you, you know, again, like you're not dead. You still got Italy. What's the status of how they're doing? They're basically being ignored now uh, and they have no real obstacles. Uh, and so if you can like Germany is actually a really good nation in terms of it can take a licking and then recover. And so often, sometimes too, you're like, well, yeah, I've lost sea line, but I still need to stay in this game because I need, you know, to give Japan the best that I can give them, right? Because your, your Japan, if you just like quit, the game's over. So you might as well fight for your chance to win the Pacific, which is just by staying alive as Germany. But I've had it before where you come back and maybe Japan crumples towards the end game, but now Germany with London out of the way is starting to encroach on, on Russia and the Russians collapsed before America could do anything because they spent all their money taking over the Pacific. So yes, I've won it uh, maybe three or four times that way. Uh, again, it's not, it's not easy, uh, right. but don't count yourself out till, you know, Berlin's and Rome have fallen and you're totally done. You also have to consider that after a failed sea lion, uh, the UK itself is just, but just a, a shadow of yeah. what it was. So it will take the yeah. UK quite a bit, at least one or two rounds before it could pose any serious, uh, uh, yeah, right, or, or take any offensive action against Germany or the Axis. So yeah. I can see that being the case. But I can also see the argument where you lose sea lion, you're like, it, it's more, I think, a psychological blow to the yeah. German player where you're, you feel that you've been defeated and why continue? So I think the defeat is not only material, but also psychological. And maybe that's yeah. where people get hung up on, where they say, okay, I don't feel like playing this game anymore. Uh, yeah. As you say, some people just give up yeah no well and that's it and that's that's the thing in access analysis is you never give up you never give up until you have actually lost um like most games that i play i win because people quit not because i actually defeated them by tactical oh, that's interesting. okay yeah it's true no it's true i'd say eight out of ten games guys just get i mean they get to the point where you're making a hundred dollars more you've got way more stuff than they do it's a foregone conclusion and they fold right i mean it kind of makes sense but at the same time, be prepared to play it out. And and you know, technical definition of victory doesn't always doesn't always come. Now it does in the tournament formats because in, in YG's tournament you had points you could score. In BBR there is an end term, and that determines what points you're going to score. Yeah. So it's a bit different. Uh, but generally, like I've, I've always played for economics, and if you can get the economics and the pieces on your side, then you've got all the time in the world, and you'll win when you win. Makes sense. Agreed, a hundred percent. So. The next uh, is Quack at 36. He's not asking the questions. He's just uh, supporting the channel. Uh, he's saying, I'm looking forward to the Allied strategy videos. Thanks for doing what you uh, are doing. We, uh, I really enjoy it. So he's looking forward to the Allied strategy videos. So 
uh, more work for right. us down the road, right? So yep. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan uh, says, great video, guys. Uh, Paul from from uh, Paul from Phoenix, right? Arizona, I, I think. Uh, very informative video, guys. Uh, Detroit asking absolutely awesome, amazing, beautiful, uh, <laughs> stupendous questions. Now, I'm just kidding. No, he's also being very supportive. Uh, thank you, Paul. And I think that's about it for the questions. I don't see anything else. Uh, so it, uh, absolutely a short video today. Uh, hopefully we answered uh, the questions that the that, that our, our viewers uh, had for us today. So anything else? No, I think I think we should encourage. I know we were talking a lottery system for maybe some stuff from from some swag from HPG. Yeah. But I'd encourage people, you know, maybe you're going to do better in the lottery if you've got a really good question. <laughs> I'm trying to convince Detroit to say the, the best question yeah. of the video, then get something in the next one or something like that. Um, but uh, so I definitely want to encourage questions and, and this type of discussion. Yeah. Because sometimes it's a lot easier to answer like a specific question because it can take just to explore a question can take a couple of minutes. Of, of, yes. We, we don't want to have videos going on two hours. Right. Sure. Um, so sometimes people have very specific circumstance um, and it's, it's, you, you're going to learn these little tricks that way when you understand sort of all the logic. So uh, I like these questions and I think it's, it's kind of immersive and engaging. And so I really want to encourage more of those. Well, that, of that's, that's the idea behind this. I, uh, moving forward, I think that when we make a video where we talk about strategy, uh, it would be best if the community participates by posting those questions uh, in the comment section. And this way, then we can make a follow up video like we're doing today, where we just answer those questions directly. Instead of just having to type the end, you know, typing or writing an answer, I think it's best if we just make a video where we get to answer uh, these questions directly to the community. I think it, I think it works best for us and the community in general benefits, I think. So, yeah. That's what we're going to do. All right. So guys, um, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, we're moving forward. Uh, hopefully now that we are partnered up with uh, historical board gaming, they are the official sponsor of the channel. Uh, I hope to be able to, to provide an even better uh, channel for you guys by creating content that you guys can, can uh, uh, enjoy and learn from. And also by once in a while, getting something as an award or a prize from historical board gaming. Right, so uh, support the channel, support uh, support uh, historical board gaming, and uh, to be honest, the best way that you could support this channel though is by hitting the like button, subscribing, and uh, just doing so. And also, don't forget to hit that little bell button, so this way you guys get a notification. And the only reason why I'm asking for you guys to subscribe is because, according to my analytics, half of the people that watch uh, the channel are not subscribed. So that says a lot. So please support the channel by just uh, doing so. Okay? <laughs> All right. So guys, uh, till next time, I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. As I like to say, don't forget to bunker down and play. Till next time.